welcome back to Upcycled Craft for a Purpose. Today we're going to look at the chapter Waiting for Blooms and talk about how sometimes in that season of waiting or feeling stuck, we don't see that God still has a purpose for us and He's doing wonderful things in us and He, as the up cycler, the ultimate upcycler, is able to take us from that place of dormancy and waiting and feeling empty and use us in a way that makes us beautiful artwork for his kingdom. Today we're going to make a craft that goes along with that message and it's called the rooting line. And I also like the words rooting line because it reminds me of that scripture that talks about how we have a cloud of witnesses that is cheering for us. So this is not exactly the kind of rooting line we're creating, but it is something to be thinking about while you're making this craft, that when you feel stuck, when you feel like things aren't working, that there is a cloud of witnesses, places that you can't see in the heavenlies. There are angels, rooting for you and God himself is rooting for you. He is cheering you on. He knows that you have a purpose and that your life matters. So here are the materials we're going to need today for the rooting line craft. You will need a dowel rod and you need to choose which one is going to actually be the right size for the window. So before you start your craft, go ahead and mount something beside your window where you're going to hang this and then kind of see how much room you have and choose there which kind of dowel rod you're going to use, which length of dowel rod. So measure not just to the edges of the window, but to the places where you're mounting it. I already had from the people that lived in our house before us some curtain mounting brackets, but there's no curtain rod there. So I'm gonna use these as my curtain rod. And this is exactly the right length to go to the edges of those mountain brackets. This one I would have to cut so that it goes past the edges of the mounting brackets. So when I get done, I'll be able to kind of check and see. But do already have that mounted, kind of saves you a little bit of time at the end. So in addition to the dowel rods, you will also need some scissors. You can choose whatever kind of scissors, it's just for ribbon. And you will need some 16 gauge wire, some really thick wire that's gonna be able to be capable of collaring your jars. And you're also going to need a set of jars. You can use mason jars, you can use honey jars. These are actually honey jars, jam jars. Whatever you like, you're going to be putting some ribbon or some decorative things around the edges, so don't worry about it having grooves. The grooves are actually going to serve a purpose. They will hold the wire on so you can suspend them. And just like our lives, sometimes we think we've got these things that look ugly, but they do have a purpose. So choose an odd number. In design, usually an odd number is best. You don't have to have all the same sizes of jars. You can vary your size and that's also kind of an interesting thing. Just make sure that you have three and two if you're doing five or two and one if you're doing three so that you can do an odd number and that is going to be that perfect disbursement of different sizes throughout. And with your, your wire, you're gonna need some, a wire cutter for that. You might need uh, some glue or you can choose hot glue. I'm gonna use hot glue because it sets faster. You will need some twine and I got some beautiful twine at Hobby Lobby, and you will probably want some decorative ribbon. Look at this cool decorative ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby today. I just kind of went crazy. There's all kinds of ribbons you can get. Some of them, actually, I got this at the dollar store. So there's some pretty ribbons that you can get at the dollar store too. So different sizes, different thicknesses of ribbon. You'll want the thinner kind of ribbon to go around the edge of the mouth of the jar if that's what you're going to choose to do later. So now that we've got our materials ready, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is take your jars, and I took all the labeling off of my jars. I used some Goo Gone after I soaked it in hot water to get the labels off because I wanted them to be clear. It doesn't have to be perfect unless you want it to be perfect. I took, and then the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna get your wire, 
and we're going to make a collar around the mouth of your jar. Now, if you happen to have a mason jar, and instead of having this kind of a lid, which is solid, you actually already have a collar, you probably don't need to make a collar. You can just use the mason jar collar. But I don't have enough mason jars to do this project, so I'm gonna use my honey jars, because that's the point, is upcycling what is already there. So taking your wire, getting it all nice and ready, and what I like to do when I make a collar is I'll make a loop at one end. So be very careful about not cutting yourself with the wire. So I'm making a loop. Now as you're making this collar, keep in mind you don't want to tighten it. So I'm going to wrap this around more than once just to make sure it's nice and secure. Again, you're not going to tighten it just yet. Alright, so I have it measured against my jar and then I'm going to give it a little extra at the end and cut it with the wire cutters. Very easy. Alright, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some either equal lengths of twine, or if you want to vary the heights of how your rooting line is going to hang, you can cut some different lengths of, one, of twine, so depending on how you want it to hang. So go ahead and measure beforehand how far down from the top of the window, from the top of your dowel rod, you want these to hang. And you'll need to measure twice that length for each length of twine. So twice the length that you want it to hang. So I decided that I want it to hang a little bit less than this far. Also, when you're measuring your length, give it just a little extra because you're gonna need some extra at the bottom to tie this off. And then you'll take your twine, and you. this is why you wanted to keep this a little loose. You're going to put this under the collar and tie it. And you're going to tie it a little more securely than that later, but for now I'm just going to tie it there. And then I'm going to tie it exactly opposite that on the other side of the collar. You can go through all the lengths of the collar if you want, but that isn't really truly necessary. It should be able to hold it without that. Okay, so once you have it tied at least once, and you can see that it's halfway across, you've got it where you want it, that is when you go ahead and tighten your collar. And as you're tightening it, just make sure that you're continuing to keep it tight all the way around, tight right against the ridges of that glass. All right, once you have it tight and you know it's not going anywhere, just kind of hold it and make sure that it's even and it's going to hang evenly. Okay, so you do this for all five of your jars. You have your little collar there. Kind of tuck it back away. And you'll make sure that you really tighten this well. Get a really good secure knot with your twine. You don't want anything coming off later and having the glass break. The twine is actually made to really not unravel easily because it is secure, so it should be good. So making sure that it's flat against the jar because once you put your ribbon on there, it's going to be under, your collar is going to be under that. So you want it to be able to attach to the jar there. Okay, so I'm going to use this, is that so cute? And I'm going to layer it with this. And I'm going to go ahead and tie that around my jar 
and make it really cute there. See how cute that's going to look? You can make a bow, you can do whatever you like, let it drape down, and then if you want to, to make it secure, you can use your hot glue to secure it. All right, I'm going to give you a second so that you can, so I can finish doing this step, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now we're back with the rooting line project, and we are ready to do the last steps of that project. The last thing we're going to do is finish up our dowel rod that's going to hang up. As you can see, I took the dowel rod and I decided to do these little optional ribbon finials on the ends. You don't have to do that, but once you've got your ribbons all glued around the collar, then you're ready to hang them. Now you can hang them this way where they will just suspend themselves over the dowel rod like so. And that's really cute. Or you can make it so that they hang so that the, the uh, ribbons will face forward by tying them up here to make them stay exactly the right way. Or you can actually get some little curtain hooks, some little shower curtain hooks, and hang them from that. But now you have a place, once you get your plant cuttings, to put all the little things that you want to root in your windows. So that is one of the cutest projects of Upcycled Crafted for the Purpose. I hope that you'll join us again for our next project. And I hope that this inspires you to realize that no matter what you think, is ugly, worthless, ready to be thrown out about you, God can upcycle you just like we take these vintage things and these throwaway things and we can make art and beautiful, purposeful things for our home and to give as gifts. These are wonderful things to give to college students. They are something that you could give to a children's home. There's wonderful places you could donate this and in paying it forward, you can help someone else experience the hope of being upcycled by the great creator, our Father God. See you next time on Upcycled Crafted for a Purpose.